one of the best places I ever seen in Europe. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Welcome to the heaven. Welcome to Sarajevo mountains. If you want to see the mountains, you need to come early because you need to hike. I could certainly spend another week in Sarajevo on the mountains, but today we're going to drive from Sarajevo to Mostar. This is around two hours. We're going to stop in four stunning places. So let's get started. One of my very first trips to Switzerland, I was like, oh wow, they speak four languages. Here it's not about the language, it's more about religion. My name is Mirza, I'm uh, from Sarajevo. We are now in Pochitel, sitting in front of uh, one of the oldest mosques. He was asking me like, do you want to come over to me? It's always like uh, holy places and people sometimes feel sensitive, at least when I went to Thailand and, you know, Buddhism or some Catholic churches, people look at you like, what are you doing, filming, are you taking a photo? It's not the goal, it's just sometimes we have curiosity. I feel like uh, with Islam maybe it's a little bit different. It's a different story in Islam because these doors are open for all kinds of people, every different nation. For people who have no idea like myself, how many times a day you need to pray? Five times a day. And do you need to go every day to the mosque? You can do from home. How does it work? It's not a must. To go to the mosque, it's a good thing that you will be rewarded for. But it's not a must to go to every prayer to the mosque. In Islam uh, history, the mosque before was not only a mosque. It was a place where the tourists could stay even overnight. There was no need for a hotel or apartment, you know. Yeah. Uh, the mosque was welcoming every tourist passing by the place. You can just normally do your prayer at home. Is it 50% Muslim, 20% Orthodox? Like, what is it, more or less the ratio? It depends on the city, but usually the most of the population in Bosnia are uh, Muslim people. But the nice things about Bosnia, and especially about uh, Sarajevo, and for example Mostar, that you can see a mosque, cathedral, and a synagogue in maybe 100 meters. Some people call it a small uh, Jerusalem. Drone, camera, waterfalls, let's do it. The falls are currently not a well-known attraction among tourists, meaning they are peaceful and not yet highly commercialized. It's not so lucky with the weather here, but it doesn't matter. It's pretty much the whole place for me. A short drive south of Mostar is a small village of Blaga. Within Blaga is a famous Tekia or monastery, which was founded by dervish monks in the 16th century. Today the monastery houses a restaurant with tables looking out over the water. This country is definitely underrated. I cannot understand why people don't know more about Bosnia. There's mountains everywhere, rivers, lakes, cascades, waterfalls, caves, anything you can imagine you have it here. And the food is fantastic as well, and people are super friendly. Honestly, one of the best places i ever seen in Europe, 100%. And here in Mostar we have one of the most famous sites. This is the old bridge in Mostar, absolutely stunning. Not too many people today because it's not summer and it's super windy, not pleasant weather. But hey, who cares? Stunning. Oh. The old bridge was built by the Ottomans in the 16th century. Really an example of the Islamic architecture and fine engineering. We had a great meal close to Mostar and 
Honestly, people here, they know how to eat properly. Traditional Bosnian outfit. Mosque in a church. I was just gonna say that uh, you have a mosque, you have a church, you have a synagogue. Everything together here. Strange things happen. But hey, the beauty of Bosnia, right? Or Bosna, like you guys say.